I wake up, I'm a martial artist. All day, I'm a martial artist. I go to sleep, I'm a martial artist. I dream, I'm a martial artist. That's it. What's up, everybody? It's episode 59 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, the only place to hear the best stories from the best martial artists, like today's guest, Mr. Mike Andrus. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick, but most listeners know me better as the host. My name is Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, if you don't know, makes the world's best sparring gear as well as great apparel and accessories, all for practitioners of traditional martial arts. I'd like to welcome the new listeners and thank all of our returning fans. If you're not familiar with our products, you should check out everything we make, like our protective gloves. With lots of reinforcement, more comfortable foam, and a better design, they're going to last you a long time and you'll actually enjoy wearing them. You can check out our gloves and the rest of what we offer at whistlekick.com. If you want to check out our other podcast episodes or show notes, those are at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And while you're on our website, go ahead and sign up for the newsletter. We offer great content to subscribers, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests for the show. Now, let's move on to the episode. It's episode 59, and I'm talking to an exciting martial artist, Shodai Soke Mike Andrus. He asked that I call him Mr. Mike, so that's what I did. I really enjoyed my time talking with him, and he told some incredible stories. With the energy he puts forth and the passion he shows for the arts, it's no surprise that I had so much fun talking to him. But enough of that. Let's jump into the episode. Mr. Mike, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Well, thank you, Jeremy. What an honor and a privilege to be with you today. Thank you again. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being here and carving some time out of your certainly busy day, I'm sure. you know We're all busy. It's a busy world today, so to, to get any time from anybody. And for those listeners out there that are listening, I appreciate your time as well. But we're not, we're not here to blow smoke back and forth, are we? We're here to tell some stories. That's right. So why don't, why don't you get started the way we always get started? How did you get started in the martial arts? Well, I am, I'm 54 years old. I live in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, a suburb about 30 miles north of uh, Philadelphia. Um, my first uh, start at martial arts was my dad. I have to give my dad all the credit who is still with us. My mom and dad are 80 years old. I love them dearly, see them every week. And uh, he took me to a karate class uh, at Tracy's Karate in Feasterville, Pennsylvania. And I'm going to give you an estimate. And it's so funny because we're looking for slides now uh, to have some uh, posterity on that. I was about nine or 10. So we'll call it 1970. Uh, and that was my first start with my dad. And I uh, uh, through the years, I stopped and started, and uh, uh, it was never quite uh, fulfilling uh, seeing this and seeing that, and and, and, I, and I don't want to jump ahead of you, but I ended up really exploring a lot of different areas, and then which led me to now, which is um, really um, study multiple disciplines and take the best of each and have combined it into something that I practice daily now, so... Uh, that's the history of it, but started probably in 70. Okay. And what was it about the martial arts that drew you in initially, you know, or did it? I mean, was it something that you... Yeah. That, okay. Well, here's a good one for you, and maybe you've got this in another episode. Um, I was bullied. So, you know, in first grade, you're in your class picture and you're in the front, <laughs> either standing or sitting down with both of your hands on your knees and you're a good little guy. Um, and I was a classic story, you know, don't want to get crazy with it, but uh, uh, got bullied by a, not one of the bigger kids, but the biggest unnatural kid in the school that I, that I went to. I went to Catholic school, so I wore a tie for 12 years from grade school and high school. And I got picked on for a, a, a few years there from, you know, fourth grade, fifth grade, maybe up into eighth grade. And, uh, um, you know, I started karate early, but didn't stick with it. Just, uh, it was a good experience. My dad got me into football and then I said, look, it's not fulfilling. And I really believe that I personally made a commitment to be bigger, stronger, and shall we say, and all the adults will laugh and the martial artists will laugh. I think I've at 54 gone from aggressive to assertive so let's use let's <laughs> let's use the word assertive but but something inside of me wanted to um get justice i guess and 
I learned a long time ago, and it's something that I preach that is the best way to get back at somebody. And I, you know, I teach this and I do lectures and people are sitting on the edge of their seat. And I said, this is the whole, this is the secret of life. The best way to get back at somebody, you know, everybody's leaning in on their chairs. And I say, is to do well. And it's true and it has been true in my life is the best way to get back at someone who has done something to you is not to get vindictive or take revenge. It's to do well. And when you do well, it it causes happiness in your life and expands your experience and you become attractive to more people. So I I, uh, I got bigger and stronger and kept getting bigger and stronger and really embraced the martial arts, I would say, full time in the 80s and studied different styles. And now just keeping my head down and trying to have some humility, uh, you know, many years later, I'm very grateful to what I've achieved and more so what I'm able to share with other people. So that's that's how it all started was getting pushed around and running home from the bus stop and wanting my mom to call his mother. <laughs> you know, that that's how it started. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you started off by saying, I'm sh- I bet you've had this in another episode and we absolutely have. I mean, we've had a number of episodes that talk about that origin for people wanting, whether it was the the child asking the parents or maybe a little bit younger, the parents encouraging, forcing the children into some kind of martial art to give them some confidence, to make them assertive, to keep those bullies at bay through actual defense. I mean, whatever it was, whatever the reasons, it is a thread that weaves through most of the episodes that we've done. Yeah. For sure. Uh, And I can tell you, by the way, uh, I'm not really bullied that much anymore. (laughs) (laughs) So. <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's good if you know me so people will tell right. you that i don't think uh i don't think that's uh happening so yeah so it worked out good and i'm sure if, if they do it, it doesn't work out well for them yeah. at least not for very exactly. long so. <laughs> it's, it's pretty quick yeah yeah and i i want to roll back for a yeah, second because i really like the way that that you put that bit of advice i mean advice tends to to fall towards the the end of the episode so i, I want to pick this apart for a second the idea that the best way to have to seek justice is to do well yeah because not only does that honor the motivation that those of us that have been bullied often feel that fuel to drive forward to seek out something else to rather than to just you know be huddled in the corner and let it beat us down but it's still also very positive yeah yeah and, and and by the way, to expand on that, you know, doing well is is, you know, you when you do well. You, by the way, you can do good and you can do well. And I happen to have a, a vocation for both. Right? We all want to be financially successful, but how about what's in your heart? You know, giving back. So uh, you know, I do some nonprofit things and just you know, no better than anybody else. But it just happens to be a component of my makeup that um that I, I focus on. So, you know, when you do well, you feel good about yourself. You share good things with others. You can support others and say, yeah, you can do it too. So you really are an example. So you're leading by example. And uh, that's something that I've tried to do over the years. And, uh, and I, you know, I was in the staffing world for a long time and I still do a lot of that. And you get people that are looking to change their jobs and they don't like what they're doing and there's a lot of people out there by the way not to change the subject that don't like what they're doing and i'm just tickled to death and thrilled that i love what i do i don't do the same thing twice in one day and i don't do the same thing day after day i'm always into something new and trying to make a difference and trying to make a change i think that's the fuel that uh, keeps me happy and by the way when you when you when you do well you get you get rewards and you get uh, a lovely person in your life and you get a good relationship with your children and your parents and fellow employees. So don't want to be too profound, but it that, that's something that I've tried to live by. Yeah. Excellent words. Excellent words. And I'm sure that, you know, we've probably discovered the theme for this episode. Every episode seems to have a subtle theme. Yours might be a little mo- more overt. I'm sure that this is going to thread through the rest of what we talk about. But let's Let's move it along a little bit now, and hopefully I prepped you well enough. But I'd like you to think about your stories now, all the mar- great martial arts stories you have. And if you've been training for even half as long as you have, you've got great stories. 
but dig in and tell us your best martial arts story. Wow. Uh, I have a lot of them. Um, I will tell you that uh, just a quick story, but then I'll get into something really, really cool is that uh, um, I did a, uh, I'm trying to look at the year here, 2003 was a tournament, local tournament, and um, for the grand championship, you had to do all the kata and kumite and all these things, and then you had to put on the skit. <laughs> and Sorry. my daughter, my daughter Lauren, who I love more than life itself, is now 19 years old, was, uh, let's do the math, she was born in 96. So we're going to call her seven years old. Um, and so what I did is, and I, and I came up with this idea, and I got a box, and I spray painted the box, and I cut out the front, and I put my, and maybe this will be the story. Uh, so um, got her dressed in her gi, and her and I rehearsed in secret, put her in this box, and I said, honey, it's going to be okay. And I put wrapping paper on it and taped it shut with a big bow and put it on a hand truck and dressed up like I was 12 years old with like shorts over my gi and a vest and I had like a sideways cap on uh, and I said and there was about three or four hundred people in the stands for this big tournament I wheeled her out nobody knew what was inside the package and uh, I wheeled out this uh, this uh, hand cart and I said to everybody hey hey look what I got for Christmas I don't know what it is I hope it's a, a G.I. Joe you know I'm really excited to open it should I open it and I have this video and People are screaming, you know, screaming. I said, are you sure? Everybody's yelling, kids, adults. And I tear the wrapping paper open and there's my daughter inside this box. And it says, Ninja Lauren Barbie. And I said, Ninja Lauren Barbie, what is this? So I reach in the box and I pull out a remote control and I hit the remote control and my daughter steps out. Now you gotta remember, she's seven years old. I can't believe she remembered all this. And we went through this whole thing where I said, oh, push twice and that happened to be one of our techniques that we were teaching her where you get pushed twice and she goes into a you know a parry and then a a, a punch and a, a you know a palm fist a, 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 a palm <laughs> heel and it was just amazing and then she ran up to me and i grabbed her hands and she did a backflip and then went into fighting position and then went into fighting position and i went over to fight her and then she grabbed me and did a nice uh, uh osoto gotti outside major sweep and did a nice flip and I akimied over and uh, we both stood up and bowed and I, I'll never forget it. So I will tell you that that's probably the best martial arts story I have uh, with my daughter. So <laughs> that's that's fantastic and, and certainly vivid and clearly you remember it so well. I mean, you remember the movements that, that you did, that she did. I mean, that's that's pretty exceptional. Now, I've got to ask. Yeah. How did you fare with that skit? Uh, we won the grand champion, and I, I, <laughs> I happened to be sitting in my office uh, in Bucks County here looking over at the six-foot trophy from Darius World Karate Center 2003 Karate Champion. So my daughter, of course, was the, was the reason that we won the big one, but uh, it was uh, the best ever. So, And I'm sure she still remembers it, and I do have a video. So uh, because we're talking about this, I will get that video. I'm going to share that on Facebook today. Oh, fantastic. That would be great. And yes. we will absolutely link that oh, from the show notes over on the website. Perfect. Uh, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com for anybody that's new to the show. We, we try to link all the stuff that we talk about over there on the show notes. Well, that that's an exceptional story. Well, thank you. It definitely went in a different direction than I was expecting <laughs> it to, but it's fun, and I and I'm looking forward to seeing that video. So cool. thanks for I'm glad you have it, and thanks for your willingness. To yeah, it wasn't it. a pressure point story. I could tell you one about the <laughs> action martial arts, but didn't end well. But it was good for me. But <laughs> <laughs> well, if we have time at the end, maybe yeah. we'll pull we'll pull another one out. But let's see how we go sure. as we wander through these. Sure. So you started training early on, just about all of our guests do. It's it's something that seems to really resonate for people that when they find it as a child, if it works for them, it tends to work for them throughout their lifetime. But I'd like you to imagine that back in 1970-ish when you found martial arts, that you hadn't found martial arts, that you went off, that you did something else, that maybe you weren't bullied. Mm. What do you think your life would look like now? Wow. Well, uh, again, I don't know the – your your uh, all of the comments because I know you're the host and you've seen sixty or so uh, good folks, but yeah, it would be totally different. And uh, 
as an assertive guy, <laughs> previously <laughs> aggressive guy, you know, you have to watch your demeanor. And so I've got a, you know, I've got a lot of pepper and vinegar in me. And um, I, I think that this has really brought me full circle. I have a tendency to, you know, the old, the old um, Mike uh, years ago, and there'll be some people that, of course, I'm going to have listened to this will shake their head and laugh that. The old moniker was if it was worth doing, it was worth overdoing. So we've all we've all had those experiences. So I I can tell you unequivocally the the martial arts and the ability to for to reel back in when you make a mistake and promptly admit it and have honor and dignity. Uh, and we've all made mistakes and I've made my share of them. But I can tell you, I think the underlying thread that has kept me from you know, continuing down that path or, or repeating it again and again and, 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 and reeling me back in. And, and I think I'm, you know, on a, a really good path uh, now for, for, for a while is that. And it's really kind of uh, honor. Uh, what's honorable? And what's, what's dig, you know, what, what, how, do you, how do you remain to have dignity and passion uh, and respect, right? So, uh, and I'm not saying I'm perfect at all, but uh, we've all had our low points. But I think that uh, I know that martial arts has helped me through those low, low points to not uh, revisit them again. So that it's it's been uh, probably the biggest part of helping me do that. And that's great. And I think one of the things that's really interesting to pull out from what you just said is that those of us that look up to high-ranking martial artists. I mean, you might meet a, a fifth don or an eighth don or a tenth degree grandmaster. These people still have challenges in their lives, in their in their day-to-day -day life. I mean, maybe when they step into the ring or they step into the, the dojo, the dojang, whatever you're going to call it, you know, they may be absolutely exceptional. But it sounds like you're saying you're still figuring some of this stuff out day to day as well. Yeah, I mean, we all have living problems, <laughs> right? They're not martial arts. Yeah. They're not martial arts problems and they're not, they don't necessarily are business problems. They're living problems and, and we all have them. And I, mine are, look different than yours, but, but it just depends on how you handle it. And uh, I've hit some speed bumps like everybody else and have had some setbacks, but I'll tell you, I can't tell you how grateful I am. And if I had to do it all over again, I'd be sitting right here talking to you. So, <laughs> yeah, and and for me personally, you know, to hear someone like you, someone that has trained for so long, say, yeah, you know, I, I still have some living problems. That gives me a lot of motivation, a lot of inspiration, especially on a day where you know something doesn't go right. Because yeah. of course, you know, within the microcosm of this show, when listeners hear me. They're hearing usually great audio quality. They're not hearing the things that I at times edit out. They're not hearing the four or five attempts at the intro where I'm cursing at the end because I didn't get it right again. You know, it's a it's a sanitized version of me. Yeah. But when you break it down, we're all in the same boat with the same but different living problems. Yeah. So thank thank you for your your being so candid there. You're welcome. Now you've given us some hints about some of the the tougher times earlier on, you know, in your martial arts life, things that have gotten easier. But I'd like you to think about a low point, something challenging in your life that your martial arts experience helped you move through or above. Yeah, I well, I mean, you know, like the, the bullying was the first one, and then I would just say that the definition of insanity is to do things over and over again and expect different results. So I will tell you that, you know, without going into too much detail, but again, and, and thank you for your candor. And I think it doesn't benefit anybody when you're on a show and you sugarcoat it and you say, never had a bad day, Jeremy. Uh, I, I, I will tell you that there might be something in my brain that's maybe different than most people. And, and my friends and family will laugh, but I really do have a exceptionally good outlook on life. And it may be unrealistic at times, but I'll tell you what, it keeps you going. And what I'm hearing from friends and family is I can't believe you're just, you're just so relentless on 
you see something you want, you go get it and, and you do that. So I think as opposed to a specific low point, because there, there's, there's really only been a couple uh, of repeats of, of low. Um, I love with passion. I fight with passion. I create with passion. Um, I think that the martial arts has given me the persistence to continue on and not give up. And boy, oh boy, if you look at Facebook or talk to anybody in this, in this, I, I don't want to say this business because don't get me started, but you know, in, <laughs> with this lifestyle who is, is, is Bushido and, and, and who lives the life of Budo every day. I mean, I wake up, I'm a martial artist. Uh, all day, I'm a martial artist. I go to sleep, I'm a martial artist. I dream, I'm a martial artist. That's it. It's all about, you talk to people about perseverance and the journey doesn't start till you get your black belt it's just that's a patience game can you hang in there long enough to demonstrate that you've got the wherewithal and the guts to hang in there and then when you get your black belt such an accomplishment then from there it opens up into all of these techniques and philosophies and you know it just gets better and better it keeps getting keeps getting better and better for me i can tell you that with the different people i'm meeting and having so much fun. So I think it's persistence is the absolute core value or tenant, if you will, right? We all have courtesy, integrity, perseverance, self-control, and indomitable spirit. And in our dojo, we say indomitable spirit, and everybody says indomitable spirit, and I say meaning, and they say to believe in yourself, and I say, do you believe in yourself? And they say, yeah, and I'm saying, and I say, I can't hear you. And they say, yes, and I still can't hear you. And, you know, I have people yell that they believe in themselves and, and I, that's how I finish. That's how we finish. And that's how I finish. So I think you have to have believe in yourself that you can do it. And, uh, you know, looking at all the great accomplishments and all the great painters and architects and mathematicians and all of these just wonderful savants, they all stuck with it when people thought they were crazy and it couldn't be done. They stuck with it, and they got they got it done. So, you know, I hope I have a a little inkling of that for my lineage and my uh, you know uh, when I when I'm not here anymore. You know. Yeah, and it sounds like that's certainly the legacy that you're leaving. And you reminded me of a quote, and I apologize that I'm forgetting who said it, but um, it goes the. <sighs> I'm going to edit this out as I collect my thoughts. Okay. I'm going to have to look it up. Yeah. I, I thought <laughs> you were going to say perfect practice makes perfect. I can tell you said that, right? No, Firstly, not right? that one. Not one. <laughs> um, the easiest way to... What would we do without the internet? Right? Great. I love it. So I looked it up. I found it. Here it is. And this is from, from Thomas Edison, who, of course, wow. is famous for failing to invent the light bulb 10,000 times, right? Yes. And the quote is, our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. Wow. There you go. Yeah. So that that's always resonated. For yeah, me. sure. Sure. You can't give up, right? No, you give up and, and you are always going to be stuck where you are. If you genuinely want to change the situation, yeah. you can't give up. Yeah, and, and by the way, I have an autistic student who is one of the my most favorite people in the whole world. I, I love her with all my heart, who is 30. She's going to be 31, and uh, we kind of did the math on this, and I'm going to say she's been my student for 18-plus years, let's say, right? Almost 20 years. Yeah. And you want to talk about somebody who has challenges every day. And that really puts into perspective, you know, other. <laughs> so, you know, you get up every day. You don't have to fight for trying to say the right thing or formulate the right word or not having your emotions take the best of you and have a have an outburst, right? You know, we don't have to do that. She's got to do that. And... We've had some major, major breakthroughs. Her mom is 
a wonderful woman who's a, a therapist, a psychologist, a very well-known psychologist, and her and I have talked about that, and she's really fascinated by some of the breakthroughs that my student has had, uh, not by therapy from a licensed therapist, and they're wonderful, but just from using our, the Mr. Mike, just being in the moment, staying in the moment with her, and just observing what I see, and then maybe throwing a little twist in there to see how she responds to that. So I'm not so sure, I mean, I didn't create it, but I'm just using my own mind and the, oh, my own philosophy of trying to get her to get outside her comfort level. And she's made just incredible, incredible slides. So don't know if you've seen any of the um, videos, but we post videos on Facebook all the time. And we're now getting a lot of people that are sharing those videos in class with their students uh, and her uh, her program. And I don't want to say the name, but the program that she's in, uh, they show it to their staff and their staff follows these videos. And that's the coolest thing in the world, right? I mean, that wasn't the goal. The goal was just to help this young lady who I met years ago, who I had empathy for. And uh, uh, she's wonderful. And she is the motivation to keep me going. I'll tell you that. And I talk to her every day and, you know, text her. And she always puts on Facebook, I'm going to have a good day today, or I'm not having a good day today. And I just give her so much credit for living every, getting up every day, and she works harder than any of us. I got to tell you, and so mm -hmm. it's it's epic that she's um, she's an amazing human being. So that's that's where it's at. That's, that's what it's all about for me. Yeah, and, and I think it should be. I think when we make our job, not necessarily our career, but our job, our our purpose in life, to help others. Yeah. You get so much more back. I mean, I think about the time, you know, there was a brief time where I had my own martial arts school, and I learned more in that two years teaching others than I ever did training under anybody else. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's, there's something about that equation. I don't fully understand it. You know, <laughs> people have written very long books about it. Other people have spent thousands of dollars to go to weekend seminars to talk about it, but there's something there. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I agree with you. Owning your own school, I mean, I've had two. Um, and I teach all privates now out of my, I have a dojang in the house, you know, and it's uh, all private students. And I do uh, public and private seminars, women's self-defense, active shooter. You know, I mean, all kinds of shall we use the word. And I think that's on most of my plaques and trophies lately are, you know, which is why would you give somebody a trophy for attending something? I'd rather get a trophy or an acknowledgement for something that I'm doing, like, that I'm making a difference for. And so my key word, and you'll laugh because you said, hey, let's go with something a little bit more hardcore is reality, right? So yeah. I really call myself a reality-based uh, systems of combative arts martial artist. And you'll laugh. So maybe this is the assertive side. It's like, yeah, we, if, you don't, if you don't believe me here, let's, let's, let's get together. We'll, I'll show you. So none of my techniques are really just uh, halfway they're all finishing techniques because you see somebody do a technique and then I always look at something and I scratch my head and I go, well, that was cool, but the guy's still standing. Or So if we're talking about self-defense and eliminating the threat, there's got to be a second technique or a third or fourth or whatever. So I kind of pride myself on all of them are finishing, finished, not a zero, negative, you know, done, done, done and you eliminate the threat. So that's just something that I've kept my head down for maybe the last 15 years and just focused on. And I think that's what most people are looking at when they look at my stuff and they go, wow, that's really uh, practical <laughs> is the word. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, Great. I've been blessed with some very good instruction. Yeah. Well, and let's let's talk about that a little bit more. I mean, perfect segue. I don't know that you planned it. I certainly didn't. But if you had to think about the people that, yeah, were influential in your martial arts life, your instructors, and maybe some people, you know, on the peer side, yeah, who would you say has been the most influential? Oh wow. Well, I have had the distinct pleasure. Uh, and by the way, you know, you look at somebody and they say, you know, they've been doing martial arts for let's just. Let's just say 23 years, you know, okay? 
and they're in a Korean martial art, and their instructor was uh, Joe, and his instructor was Bob, and then his instructor was Ken, and then his instructor was a Korean, you know, a master. But that's okay, and that's one, you know, it's one style, and you might be proficient in that, and you've been taught by, taught by, taught by. I am just so grateful that uh, my teacher for Sanuka's Jiu-Jitsu is Professor Saifala Amwariki, who was a student of Dr. Moses Powell. So if you go Dr. Moses Powell, uh, Professor Saifala, then me, that's pretty cool. Um, and another guy that's been tremendously influential is Grandmaster Alan Chung. Uh, uh, that's another cool story where I met him at a tournament and he pointed to those kids. He's like, whose kids are they? I don't recognize that style. What is that? And it was Hon Abdo. It was my reality-based style. So it was more American boxing and the, the, the judges couldn't even put their wrap their heads around it because it wasn't a traditional, didn't look like a traditional style, so they didn't score well, but they fight good. <laughs> and um, he ended up making me one of his first adult students in a long, long time. So he's a Kempo guy, but he's also uh, does a lot of Chinese martial arts, and he's a historian, and he knows a lot of everything. So he is uh, along with me, with the Universal Martial Arts Group that we founded. Uh, so I've gotten a lot from him. Uh, I've done some amazing seminars, and I got to tell you that I love Wally J. Uh, Small Circle yeah. is my big thing. So Leon, uh, his son, who is now the uh, uh, inheritor of that style, uh, I've trained with him, and I just absolutely love Small Circle. So you've got you've got Grandmaster Leon J. You've got Alan Chung, you've got Professor Saifala, and then and then there are others that are just uh, you know Hanchi Rico guy to be around him and uh, uh, all a lot of these legends that I consider my friends and I and you know the old adage take what you like and don't take what you don't like and I've learned so much from all of them and and, and oh and on the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu side little Tony Pachensky is my instructor and I was under the Pedro Sauer team for a while and another uh, Pan American three time champion, but little Tony is under uh, Rodrigo Medeiros and, and Hickson Gracie. So you can't argue with that li lineage. So uh, <laughs> I'm, no, not at I'm, all. I'm fortunate to have a pretty well rounded background of uh, striking skills, joint lock, joint break, takedown, grappling, submission. So I, I, I think that was what you alluded to earlier. It's like I wasn't happy because I wasn't well-rounded. And I think now I've become much, much more well-rounded uh, as a martial artist. And that's what I teach as well. Yeah. Well, those are some absolutely phenomenal names. And certainly I think anybody listening knows at least a few of them and is probably pretty envious of one or two of those names at the least. Yeah. I know I I'm the lucky guy listening sure. to you. Yeah. So yeah, 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 for sure. So we talked a little bit earlier about competition, but we didn't get into it too much. So what's your relationship with martial arts competition? Uh, so with martial arts competition, you mean as in formal or just other people? Or uh, So, you know, for my one of my Don tests, I was, uh, this is a, well, may I tell you a short story? You'll laugh. You may, please. Okay, so uh, by, by the way, uh, so I have a six degree black belt, Hon Hab Do, which is uh, in Korean, mean blending of the arts. And it's a combination of the original sensei, founder, it was American boxing, uh, uh, Korean, you know, it's a Taekwondo based where, you know, punching and kicking and round kicks, ridge hands, you know, knife hands, you know, all the shootos, all of those things wrapped together with components of American boxing, uh, Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu, uh, Jap uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Well, if you look at that and fast forward 20 years, isn't that what MMA is now? It's striking, it's grappling. And it's, you know, a better use of more weapons, knees and elbows. So lo yeah. long story short, so uh, so that was my original instructor. So um, I've just been recently asked uh, to, that if I, would I like to test for my fourth degree uh, in uh, universal Kempo? And so it's universal martial arts. So there's, you know, there's uh, forms, uh, there's all different things, uh, components of there. So this would be a uh, fourth in Universal Kempo and Okinawan Karate, and which I have a third in both of those, a fourth in Shurinru, and then a sixth in Honhabdo. So I've just recently been asked to test for my fourth degree. Wow, what an honor. 
uh, I know when it's going to be, and I'm only going to show up if I'm ready, and it has to be perfect, right? That's the way you, you have to look at it. So right. a few years ago, <clears throat> one of my instructors, who I've mentioned, who I love dearly, uh, Grandmaster Alan Chung, said, uh, well, as part of your test, young man, you have to compete in this tournament. You have to do this form. And I said, okay. So the form is Cezanne. And uh, I practiced and practiced and practiced. And I'm going to give you the year. I'm going to say 2009. Okay, let's go with 2009. Um, I think it was that it was that year. So um, he said, I want to see it. You have to do this in a tournament. I said, okay, well, it was just part of the test. The other test was in the dojo and all that. So I practice every day, all day for months and months and months. And um, I go to this tournament to New Jersey and uh, he shows up. And I said, oh, my gosh, thank you so much. I'm so honored. I'm so glad you're here to support me. He said, oh, no, no, I'm not here to support you. I'm competing against you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, he put his dobok on and uh, proceeded to sit with me and have fun, and everybody knew him. And I will tell you the truth, and I'm so grateful that in that seniors division, in our division four forms, uh, there was a guy that came in first that was just incredible. Grandmaster Alan Chung came in second, and I came in third. So, so you know, strategically, third was great for me. Uh, yeah. Not beating the instructor, which I couldn't beat him anyway. He is so one of the best ever, ever, ever in forms. If you've ever seen him, he's probably the best I know ever. Uh, 50 or more grand champions and He's just taught me so much. So anyway, that was uh, part of the test. And I guess, you know, I did pass, but that was one of the most creative things I've ever heard of. And he's just a fantastic guy. And that was uh, part of that story. So, yeah. So, uh, and then I competed in the PA Jiu Jitsu uh, and, uh, you know, won't, won't bore you, but uh, that was a few years ago. I'm 54. I was in my forties. Nobody would fight me. There was over 40 and so if you don't have anybody to fight you in your division, you got to, if you have the guts, you just go into the open category. And I went, sure, I'll do that. And so, you know, I'm 47 or 45, whatever at the time. And I'm in the open division for jiu-jitsu as a white belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And I'm fighting against the starting linebacker from the University of Virginia, who's 22 and he's 6'4". And he weighs 280. And so, you know how that goes. So uh, uh, <laughs> so I fought twice and uh, uh, I lost to both of these guys that were just uh, animals. But great experience and I would do it again. So I, I've had some fun doing that, you know. Yeah. 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 So when you were competing against your instructor there, do you think you stepped it up even more? with him in the, in the ring against oh, you? Oh, oh, sure. I mean, it, you know, I wanted to do the best job I could. And the interesting thing is he actually is so good that he modified. <clears throat> so it's not like, you know, that's not what I live for forms. And he knows that <clears throat> I live for reality based. What happens on the street? What happens in the subway? You know, that's what I live for. But so he actually modified the form a little bit, which is brilliant for my power and my size, right? And so he is so good that he actually modified it. So I think the judges, when they saw the form I was doing, they were a little um, confused because it wasn't, shall we say, the absolute traditional form that they're used to seeing with Cezanne. He changed it up a little bit for me. So um, I, I was simply there to make him, you know, to for his approval. I mean, that's I wanted to show him that that his instruction and my will to win was was going to do it and i was happy that i beat a bunch of other people and not him <laughs> uh but it worked out pretty couldn't have worked out better awesome yeah. that's great and i um i i can i don't think i've ever no i've never competed against any of my instructors certainly friends certainly training partners but uh that must have been quite the honor yes yes it was to share yes. to share right yeah. yes it was so you know, we've talked about a lot of names, a lot of people that you have trained with. But if you think about who you haven't trained with, yeah. if you could pick somebody, I, whether, you yeah. know, who, who would that be? And I'll even let you pick people that are, have passed. I haven't. I haven't. So there's one 
person when I was training with Professor Saifala that uh, I was a part uh, and and uh, a great grateful enough. Uh, he has a nickname for everybody. So when I first met him and I start training with him, uh, you know, you've heard us, right? So everybody in the world, you know, says us, right? And, and it's so funny when you talk to some new people and you say us and they go, us and I go, hey, what's that mean? And they go, oh, I'm not sure, but everybody says it. And I go, oh, okay. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, is it OSS? Is it OSU? Is it OSS? Oh, you know, ah, uh, OSA, you know, us, right? So I'm with you. I'm hearing you. I'm connected. I'm focused. Yes, let's continue. I'm in. No, all co- I'm hearing you. I acknowledge that, right? There's a whole bunch of different variations of that, right? So my nickname in Sanukas uh, under uh, Professor Sefala is Us Magus is my nickname. Uh, going on a lot of years now. So I was training with Professor Saifala, and unfortunately, as we all know in the martial arts world, uh, Dr. Moses Pal passed away January 17th of 2005, I believe I have the correct date. Uh, so I was a Sanukas warrior training with Professor Saifala and uh, Grandmaster Veronica and Charles Allen and Grandmaster Charlie Brown and uh, you know, all, uh, uh, Professor World, and I mean, all these people that I met in Sanukas that are just so awesome, never got a chance to meet Dr. Moses Powell. Uh, but I know so many people that are masters, that are Hanshis, and, and uh, that know him, that knew him, loved him, and just were blown away by his power and grace and technique. And so it, it is without a doubt. I would pick Dr. Moses Powell to meet and even have lunch with and sit and listen to him. And and I have to tell you that I think you know this too. It's not just training with somebody. It's just listening to them and watching them and how they interact with people, you know, and and I love that. So he would, he would be the guy that I would pick unequivocally number one that I wish I've met. And, uh, and by the way, subsequently at a, uh, at a uh, what you what do you call it uh, uh, at a proceed uh, at a ceremony in Philadelphia to honor his life, I was fortunate enough to be with both of his daughters uh, and a lot of the Sanukas warriors. So I met Dr. Moses Powell's daughters and a lot of the instructors. So uh, Dr. Moses Powell would be the guy. Okay, yeah, sounds like you almost got to piece together at least some part of him. Yeah. with all those. Oh others. yes, yes, yes. It's great. Yeah. So let's talk about movies. Are, are you at all a martial arts movie guy? I'm going to guess you are. <laughs> you, seem, you seem to have that dynamic about you. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because there's, you know, you don't realize that other people are such historians and, you know, Kung Fu theater. You know, when I was 10 years old, I mean, I remember watching that and, you know, the subtitles and, you know, nothing was in English and, and all that. So, You know, I look back and I can't give you the names of a lot of those, but a lot of my Chinese studying martial art guys that do Kung Fu and Shina and all all this other, you know, uh, the Chinese martial arts can. But sure, I mean, you know, you look at the martial arts movies and, you know, Marty Cove's a friend of mine from Action Martial Arts, the the, uh, karate kid. And but but I saw that we were talking about the questions earlier. What's your. You know, what's my favorite movie? I mean, it has to be Enter the Dragon. And you're probably like me if it's a rainy day and something comes on. Uh, you watch it again or maybe you say to yourself, ah, I've seen this movie 30 times. I can't watch it anymore. I, I don't know of anybody that would raise their hand ever who's a martial artist that if Enter the Dragon came on again, you wouldn't just watch it. <laughs> so. Yeah, of course. So, so that movie in itself and other Bruce Lee movies and other martial art movies were influential to me. Billy Jack is another one that, you know, come on. I mean, I mean. Billy Jack does not get mentioned enough on this show. Oh, I mean, that was just, you know, I wish I was him, right? When I was watching that movie, I'm like, wow, man. Wow. And there was a lot of social uh, things going on in that movie, too. And I haven't seen it recently, but I know he just recently died. Um, the star of that, Tom Laughlin, I guess his name is, or if I have it right, Laughlin. But uh, I think that's right. But uh, yeah, so Billy Jack's one, and and that, and 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 look, I'm uh, there's a little bit more controversial stuff going on about Steven Seagal lately, and I, I kind of put my uh, 
uh, a spin on that. And a lot of people were like, hey, man, you're like spot on. But I enjoy watching some of his older movies where he does some of his fast reality based techniques, if you will. That, uh, that was entertaining to me, you know. So some of the some of the Seagal movies, but probably Bruce Lee for sure. Enter the Dragon would be my fave. Yeah. Yeah. And whatever Steven Seagal is doing now doesn't have any impact on the quality and the fun of his movies I, in the past. I totally agree. It's just you can think of him then and the entertainment value and the and, and the enjoyment, or you can think of him now and, you know, what he claims that uh, an MMA fighter won the UFC because he did everything that I told him to do. Okay, so what? I mean, you know, I'm not, I don't judge that. It is what it is. And I enjoy the, like you said, movie, the art of the movie and the suspense and the action. And they're all, I mean, look, James Bond movies are cool. I like James Bond movies. There's a bunch of very practical joint locks and throws in those movies that I think are cool too. So yeah, the quality of choreography has definitely advanced. I think it's a more sophisticated moviegoer as martial arts has spread. And even the people that don't train still have enough of an idea that they can look at a fight scene and say, I don't think that would work. <laughs> so the choreography kind of had to evolve. And yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty much any fight scene you see now, there's some legitimate martial arts in there unless it's – you know, somebody absolutely massive just throwing other guys around. Yeah, and I was going to say that, like, even I didn't mention it, but like, if you just look at, let's just take a Jackie Chan who had a lot of serious formal training but got into the movies. Like, it's so funny. Like, you know, people that don't study or don't practice or aren't flexible or don't understand techniques, look, there's like less than one tenth of one percent of the people on the planet can even do the goofy stuff that he does in his movies with his own stunts, like kip ups and, you know, he does aerials and his spinning, I mean, just the stuff on ladders and just like the really neat transitions that are comical and fun or fighting. It's a real talent. I mean, that is a lifelong studied uh, talent to get to that point to be able to do those stunts. So I, I give him a lot of credit for that. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. He's, he's one of my favorites for yeah, sure. He's a cool guy. So you mentioned a few names. If you had to pick one of them or, or, or maybe some of you didn't mention, who's your favorite martial arts actor? Uh, wow. Well, I guess I'd have to go with Bruce Lee. And you probably is, – is, I, would, I would imagine that's probably the most mentioned yes. name you got. So, Absolutely. So corny as it is, seeing Bruce Lee when I was seven years old and said, man, that's what I want to be. That's the guy I want to be like, wow, that's that that's stuck with me still today and was out in California with a, a friend of mine recently took me on a tour and it was the first time I was there on the walk of you know fame there where the stars are and got a chance to pose with Bruce Lee's star and just the coolest thing. Right. I mean, just love it. So, yeah, definitely my favorite. Uh, and actor. is there anybody I mean, you can. You can certainly, there's a little bit of controversy around how good of an actual martial artist he was. We've had some people on the show that <laughs> knew him, and we've, we've heard things that go in different directions about that, to be sure. But there isn't a single person, even now, who has more of an influence on the way martial arts is received in not just popular culture, but, but society overall. Yes, and I will tell you this, that without being controversial, and I'll... Uh, be as uh, PC as, as possible. I was just out and received a nice award at the Soke Ship Council in Omaha, Nebraska. And I was with one of my very uh, good friends that I'm getting to know better, who was an uh, original student of Bruce Lee out in California. And um, there's no question that uh, Bruce Lee's skill set and Taoism and beliefs have changed the lives of millions and millions of people. And this guy is legit and hardcore and so are his students and wants to keep that alive and i can tell you man i mean it's uh i like the hardcore stuff so i i i believe that bruce lee was an amazing martial artist but even more amazing was he was a student of the game and wasn't happy with what he saw uh and studied the it man and you know all the other things to come up with his own uh best of breed style that worked for him 
So for me, who's a guy that's taken the things I liked about some styles and not so much other things and put them together, I've <laughs> not on that level, but I'm just saying for me personally, that's what I've done. Right. Um, I've put my own things together that I use to, on a day-to-day -day basis that makes me feel confident with my skill set to be able to defend myself and others and and the confidence that I'm sharing a very well-rounded uh, message and techniques to my students and those who want to learn. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a reader at all? You, do you have any martial arts books that you might recommend to the audience? Wow. I can't lean over, but I'm looking over at my thing and uh, this, the history of the samurai and, and believe it or not, there are read, there's reading material that you is required when I first started with Professor Saifullah. So there was books, oh. books about ancient martial arts and, uh, and you know, they're, they're jujitsu books, right? The Japanese, the history of Japanese jujitsu. Um, and understanding that the philosophy and the movements. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I've read those and I have pressure point books and I have a, in my basement, a box, if you will, of VHS tapes from Dillman and VHS tapes from uh, DVDs from Tim Larkin and, uh, you know, Richard Ryan, <laughs> you know, I mean, I've just reached out and I have all that stuff, man. I've gone through all of those things over the years to just find what I think is the best. So, um, I, uh, there is a book called staying in the moment by Mr. Mike Andrus that I like, by the way, not uh, just getting, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so I, I'm not an avid reader anymore. I, I, cause I read, and my day job growing organic lettuce for We Feed Us, I have to read so many technical briefs and other things that I don't really take the time out. But, you know, I train a lot. I train every day. So um, so I've read through a lot of things and a lot of interactive demos and DVDs and VHSs and things as well. So, well, yeah. T take a minute. Take a minute and tell us about your book. Oh, OK. Well, um, the book's called Staying in the Moment. I published it self-published it in January of 2014. I have a second one ready to go. I've got all the pictures done. I just have to put captions and it's called Staying in the Moment, A Practical Guide to Women's Self-Defense. And it's about as straight as you can get. 57 pages, 175 pictures. Chapter one is <laughs> somebody attacks you from the front. What do you do, right? That's chapter one. Somebody attacks you from the back, chapter two. Somebody's trying to choke you. If they choke you, you're dead. You can't fight. That's chapter three. Avoid the choke. And chapter four is a, a compilation of a lot of safety tips. So that's volume one out of four. Uh, volume two is coming up. But um, I have another book that I am currently writing. And it is about my student who struggles with the challenges of autism every day. Uh, and I will tell you that it is called A Black Belt Life Lessons. And it's going to be a big, big book. And it's the most important thing that I think I'm going to be able to contribute. And each chapter is a lesson. And it's one lesson. Like you said earlier, you know, did you have low points? You know, what were the breakthroughs? What helped you get through it? And the book, pretty much each chapter is about one of our lessons. And what did she get from it as a student? and somebody with autism and what do I get from that lesson somebody that's an instructor that's a teacher and I will tell you that I get just as much out of, out of my lessons with her I've, I'm seeing her tomorrow at four o'clock so that book is going to be written for teachers and therapists and parents of autistic people who can look at this and and experience some of the breakthroughs that she and I went through together and how we achieved that. I wasn't able to touch her hair because she would scream and yell and, you know, go run in the corner 15 years ago, but I can walk over to her now and touch her hair and, you know, play with her hair and say, oh my gosh, look how beautiful your hair is. Love the haircut you got. And she's fine with it. And about two years ago, after 17 years of, of lessons, she finally made eye contact with me and now she makes eye contact with everybody and she didn't have eye contact with anybody for like 
forever. And it was just a little drill that I came up with where I wanted her to focus on my hand and I moved my fingers around. And then I yelled at her and said, if you can look at my hand, why can't you look at my face? You know, and I yelled at her, you know, kid in the radio, like, yeah, why can't? And she looked at my face and I said, continue to look at me. And so it's just the book is going to have all these breakthroughs of my recollection of the things that we talked about and the things that I asked of her and the things that I said to her. You know, I said, look, you're a black belt. I will gladly reduce you in rank. Ha <laughs> ha. You know, getting around like my instructor told me. And I said, does that black belt mean a lot to you? Yes, sir, it does. It means a lot. Okay, well, then stop it. You know, act this way. You, you know, think about it. Stop for a minute and think. And she does. And she just, you know, it makes such a difference. She just brings herself back that much better now. So that's going to be, I think, I'm super excited about it. I just need to, you know, <laughs> focus and get it done. And I want to get it out there to the world. Hopefully, before the end of the year, I'll be uh, publishing that. So look, stay tuned for that. That sounds great. And of course, we'll link to the existing book. Oh, cool. And as you release any other books, uh, we'll let the listeners know oh. as we're recording this, it's February 9th, 2016. But as you put out any other books, please get us the information. We'll update the show notes page over on the sure. website. Thank you. And people can, can check those books out as they're released. Thank you very much. Oh, well, you're welcome. So, what else you got going on? I mean, you're you're a, you're an author, and and it sounds like you're you're teaching seminars. You're doing a bunch of other things. Yeah. You know, this is your your this is your commercial time. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us what you got going sure. on. Sure. So, so what I have going on is I have this women's self defense seminar that I put together. You know, like for years now. I don't know how many years and how many women have gone through it, but uh, I get good feedback. So I do these public and private seminars for people that can contact me who want to have, you know, their daughters are going to high school, their daughters are going to college, their daughters are studying abroad, um, their daughters are, you know, uh, uh, in a sorority. We don't, as parents, teach our daughters martial arts. We just don't. We don't teach our daughters self-defense. And we don't think about teaching our sons because they're tough and they're, they play football, you know, just the stereotypical stuff from years ago. But, but why is it as parents we don't teach survival we teach how to write a check we teach how to drive a car we teach how to play sports we teach how to communicate with others to be nice but we don't teach about how to defend our bodies and our minds against bad people and so with my daughter being 19 i made a commitment when she was born i said i'm going to change the way this is looked at so that's why i wrote the book i, I do this thing called staying in the moment so on my website, you know, there, there are seminars, so you can go to the, my website, and I'll give you a link to that along with the book, it, which is on Amazon and Kindle. So I'm doing those, um, and I just take a pragmatic approach of what's common sense, and I use joint lock, pressure point, um, and jiu-jitsu more so than punching and kicking, because interview a woman that's been raped, and, and the answer you get is, we didn't stand there and have a two-round boxing match, it was... You know, the guy came up behind me, didn't see him. It was dark. All the elements of surprise, all the uh, unethical and immoral. Uh, he said he was doing this and he meant that. Um, somebody that you know, uh, date rape, you know, in a car, in an apartment, on a bus, you know, whatever. Um, so I kind of, in my training, use all these practical uh, tips to keep people, first of all, out of trouble. And then if they get into trouble, so, you know, if, look, if you can escape, escape. If you can't fight, and if you fight, you have to win. You can't become a victim. So I have the seminar series. Just started this thing. We're advertising some active shooter. I won't go too into that. That's really uh, fascinating. I've learned a lot, studied a lot up on it about how to play dead, uh, how to look that, how to how to escape. If you can't escape again, you got to hide. If you hide, you got to hide properly. And if you can't hide, you got to fight, and you you don't want to make yourself a victim. So I've got all of that going on. Um, I do seminars all over the place, uh, did one down at Action Martial Arts, doing one at USA Hall of Fame, World Karate Union in June. These are some of my favorite events and organizations. So um, you have a lot of events coming up, and if anybody's interested in seminars, I travel to different schools. Uh, one of my favorite schools is Generations, uh, TKD in Langhorn. Those, Mike Gallagher and his crew are phenomenal, so I go over there and I teach 
you know, monthly, bi-monthly and uh, some of the stuff I do. So I'm connected with a lot of different dojos in the area and do some seminars. And uh, I'm going to continue to do that and write the books. And then on my spare time, of course, I'm building a hydroponic lettuce organic lettuce production facility in Jersey. So, you know, hey, what are you going to do, right? <laughs> you're, growing, you're, you're really growing lettuce. Yes, for real. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes, for real. Now, now do, do people, um, I, I'm working on perfecting my indoor greens growing ah. uh, facility. Yes. And as soon as I talk about that with anyone here, we'll go completely off the, off the rails from martial sure. arts for a moment. Sure. People always ask me, uh, I'm guessing the same manner of questions that they probably ask you right. related to what are you really growing and, <laughs> and and are you hiding things in between the lettuce and, <laughs> and whatnot, but you're actually growing lettuce. Right. So I built a uh, 6,000 square foot uh, aquaponic facility that grew about 50,000 heads of lettuce. We had about 3,000 tilapia. Uh, uh, you know, consider myself a hydro aquaponic uh, expert now with the staff that I had and have been doing it for th four years, and now I'm building a 168,000 square foot controlled environment agriculture greenhouse called the We Feed Us Agriculture Innovation Center in Pleasantville, New Jersey. And we're going to produce 5.1 million heads of organic produce. So that's uh, all different types of lettuces and using water soluble fertilizer that's organic. And just, uh, yeah. So I know we didn't talk about this, kind of took a left turn, but. Yes, yes, that is my vocation. The company is called We Feed Us, W-E-F-E-E-D-U-S. We Feed Us and the WeFeedUs.com. And the reason it's We Feed Us is so they don't have to. When I say they don't have to feed us, it's uh, export import, right? South America, you know, whatever. So, yeah, so stay tuned to that. Everybody can go to that website, too. I, hey, that's great. But um, th I do that all day long and train in between and at night and those are the two vocations that I that I'm doing. Those are the two things I do full time. That's interesting. Yeah. It's, there's almost this this kind of fun modern juxtaposition if we think of, you know, the the samurai and and they weren't the ones working in the rice paddies, but there <laughs> were, certainly were people working in the rice paddies and and martial arts around them. And now here you're working in the lettuce and teaching martial yes, arts. Yes, in the back in the feudal days, right, when they were uh yeah, they were protecting those uh well, actually it was an uprising of the uh of the common folk, right? Uh against the, the tyranny of uh some of the uh the villainous uh leadership back then. So I won't go into that. But yeah, that's what I'm doing. Uh and I'm excited about it. And by the way, you know, for for uh Safety Studio, my studio, it's a uh, a cool URL because I was in the technology space for many years, I happen to own, and the website is youstaysafe.com, the letter U, staysafe.com. That's the Safe Day Studio website, and uh, people can go to that and look at some of the history of what I've done and seminars and contact me, so that's kind of cool stuff. This is this has all been great, for sure, and I really appreciate your sharing. Thank but you. Let's go out on the highest of notes. Yeah. I'm sure you've got some advice and words of wisdom for all of us. What might, what might those be? Wow. So, uh, you know, we all try, right? Everybody makes a valiant effort to do things. And I don't know if you, you know the book, The Four Agreements. But as I get older, I start to really value some pretty good advice or great advice. And I think my dad you know, is the guy that's given me the best advice at all. I mean, and, and it goes right along with everything else is, you know, be impeccable with your word. Say what you mean, mean what you say. You can really be hurtful with words when you don't think about it too quick. If you say somebody's this or they look like that. So, you know, I, I always say to people, try to be impeccable with your word. Um, try your hardest every day and it's never going to be the same, right? Some days are better. If you have a cold, you know, you're going to hit a 70%. If you don't have a cold, you might get 100%. But at the end of the day, if you can tuck yourself in and say to yourself, man, I did the best I could. And then the other thing is don't assume uh, anything. And I always talk about the stories about staying in the moment. And you see somebody and they're driving super fast and you get really mad. And you don't know whether that person's just a jerk or they just got a phone call that their son's in the hospital and they're rushing to the hospital just like you would. Or... Your spouse or somebody comes home and they, they have a certain look on their face and you go, oh, oh, that again. And then they go, huh? And then you have this conflict rather than asking 
the hard questions and saying, hey, I noticed that look on your face. Is everything okay? And the person might start to turn around and say, no, but thank you for asking. Here's what's going on. And then you can turn around and say, wow, let me help you with that. Or I feel bad. Or, you know, I'm praying for you. Right? So that's not assuming anything. And then the last thing is just don't take anything personal. And that goes, it doesn't that go back to the best way to get back at somebody is just to do well. Like if you focus on yourself and all you want to do is do good things that all that stuff falls into place. And for me, it's, a constant work of art and things are falling in place and that's that's just I don't I have pretty thick skin I really don't take anything personal try not to sometimes you get caught up in it but so those are some things that I try to live by um, and the final thing is take personal responsibility for your own actions when you're wrong promptly admit it and look around the world and see all these people taking everybody else's stuff and all this other stuff. And I think it just comes back to the core, the core value that some of us have been taught, others haven't. But we all should follow is just take personal responsibility for your own actions. And I think the world would be a better place. So that's my humble advice. <laughs> Thank you for listening to episode 59 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, and thank you to Mr. Mike for your time and your fun stories. Head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com for the show notes with links to the things we talked about today, including that video of the skit that Mr. Mike performed with his daughter. It really is as funny as it sounds, so you got to check that out. If you like the show, please subscribe or download one of the apps so you never miss out on a new episode. And if we could trouble you to leave us a review wherever you download your podcast, we'd appreciate it. Remember, if we read your review on the air, just email us and we'll get you a free pack of Whistlekick stuff. If you want to be a guest on the show or you know someone that would be a great interview, please fill out the form on the website. Just a side note, we found out that some of our form entries weren't making it to us and we believe it's fixed now. So if you sent in a guest request or a contact using the form and we didn't write back, I apologize, but please try again. We do respond to every inquiry we actually receive. Stupid technology, right? Please follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram, all with the username Whistlekick. And remember the products we make here at Whistlekick, like our comfortable sparring gloves and a whole lot more at whistlekick.com. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.